testing one, two. Okay, my friends. Welcome to today's video. I want to thank everybody for joining me. The topic I'm going to talk about today is most expats don't have your shit together for when you die. You just don't. We just don't. Let me put myself in that same, we're all in the same boat. Because I don't know the first expat that's really got his shit together. That if he died right now, that his local wife, no matter what country you're living in, uh, wouldn't be stressed the fuck out to where, you know, she's, where she knows what to do. I just, I'm, I'm going to submit that most of us, we think we have a good plan of action in place. And some of you motherfuckers, you ain't got no plan of action in place. But when you, when we die in our home country, it's, it's, it's never easy for the relatives. I mean, I don't care how prepared you are. There's always shit that you, don't, that you didn't think about that they're going to have to look for this document, hunt for this document. It, it's never really easy. I don't think uh, for the family, you know, for anybody dying, you know, maybe unless you've been in a nursing home for 20 years and everything's already in order. But if you're an active, you know, productive member of society, I'm just going to argue that you don't have your shit together. If you're one of those that, that has your shit locked down, wired tight, all right, well, hey, you know, my hat's off to you. But I would say that the average expat does not have his shit together for when he dies, especially, well, either way, whether you're single and you're just traveling around the world, you don't have your shit together. If you're an expat and you're married and you have uh, you know, your wife is from that local country and you got kids there, you probably do not have your shit, you know, fucking wired tight. So today's video is just going to uh, try to invoke thought. If you're an expat, you got a, got a local wife, you got kids, or if you're backpacking around the world on a perpetual vacation, enjoying your retirement. I'm just going to provide some food for thought here. And this 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 shit didn't didn't just pop in my head. I mean, I've uh I've had a few buddies die over here on this side of the world. And, you know, on the outside looking in, just uh observing their situation with what their family was left uh to deal with. I just want to provide some food for thought. Uh, let me throw the legal disclaimer out there for all the fucking Sue happy motherfuckers back in the West. I'm not here giving you legal advice. I am not a lawyer. I'm not an attorney. This is not a fucking legal advice video. This video is designed just to give you things to think about where you can go discuss with your attorney. You can discuss with your family, um, you know, with your legal counsel to make sure you're prepared for when you fucking die. So I'm not giving you advice. I'm not an attorney. Let's see, what else fucking legal bullshit disclaimer do I got to give to the fucking millennial generation here? Oh, fuck it. That's it. That, that's all you fucking get. All right. This is fucking for entertainment purposes. So any any goddamn skinny jean wearing motherfucker want to sue me after this? Fuck you! You've already got the disclaimer. Moving right along. Let's just get into the simplicity, and then I'll tell the stories around the simplicity. All right, number number one. Okay, when you're in your home country, you need to have a will. That's fucking common sense. But how many of you watching this video don't have a will? I'll bet you it's probably 75% of my viewers right now, regardless of your age, you do not have a will. 
and you know I'm from the US so I would I would say hey 75% of you in America right now watching me you don't have a will you're not prepared to die and you're saying oh I'm only 30 years old well guess what motherfucker 50,000 people in the US get killed in car accidents every year okay a car accident doesn't does not discriminate against age so you're not prepared but in your home country you need to have a will and, and within that will you need to have some uh, specifics about where your assets need to go who they need to go to uh, the logistics of your funeral you know uh, what you know what uh, items you want to pass on to what friend or family member you need to have these specifics. Now that's obvious. It's so fucking obvious that you need to have a will and not let the government take over for you. Because if you don't have a will, then the local laws uh, are going to apply whether you like it or not. That's fucking foolish. It's, it's your life. You should be able to get buried the way you want to be buried and your assets should go to whoever you want them to go to. But if you don't have a fucking will, guess what? The goddamn law made by these jackass fucking lawyers and goddamn politicians, that's going to take over. Now, do you want other people telling you where all of your hard work and, and your savings and your assets are going to go? No. So step number one, you need a fucking will in your home country. That's for everybody. But especially if you're an expat, you know, living in another country outside of your home country or you're on the fucking overstate road and you're just bebopping from country to country. Mm. Drinking a cold sand made light, my friends. All right. So step one. Common sense. This is Captain fucking obvious telling you to, to fucking get a will. You don't got to pay a lawyer $10,000 to, to generate a will. I wrote my own will. I update my own will every six months or when situation dictates. I write my own will. I get it notarized. I get it signed by witnesses. Boom, that's my fucking will. It's that you, it, it, it can be that simple. Now, it's better to have an attorney obviously involved in the process and and, and all that, and I'm, I'm never going to tell you not to get an attorney, but if you say, hey, I'm, I'm a broke motherfucker like you, all right, well, fine. You see the motherfucking fingers? You get on the goddamn keyboard, tap, 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 tap. What's it old dude? Old Boomhauer. Old Boomhauer on fucking King of the Hill. Tap, tap, tap on the dang old, dang old, dang old internet, and you can download a fucking sample will <clears throat> and just plug in what's applicable to you print that motherfucker out, sign it, get it notarized, have some witnesses on there, and give it to a motherfucker that's gonna execute it. Have your attorney hold on to it. So don't give me an excuse that you don't got money because that, that's all bullshit, my friends. That's, that's just absolutely horseshit. You can generate a will, and there's no excuse why you don't have one. For the expat and the world traveler, now if you're if you're bebopping from country to country, this is going to be maybe a moot point, but this goes out for the guys who are, um, you know, for example, right now I'm in the Philippines. If I'm spending most of my time in the Philippines or if I live in Thailand or if I live in Guatemala, I live in, uh, you know, wherever, whatever country you need to have a will prepared by an attorney in that local country. Now, that may seem Captain Obvious, or you may say, well, I've already got a will in America. Okay, motherfucker, take that will from America to Thailand, where most folks don't speak, read, write English, and then, and then try to slide that in there. Let me know how that works out for you. And oh, by the way, that shit's gonna have to get uh, you know, translated by official translators, and it's going to have to get what the hell they call it. There's another word for it. anyhow, certified, what what have you. You're going to go through all these fucking steps, especially if you're in a non-English speaking country. And so I'm I'm trying to validate my argument that you need a will in your home country, and you need a will in the country that you're living in. 
So if you're in Thailand, you need to get a Thai attorney, have a will in Thailand. Now it should mimic the, the, the will that you already have, but say you have assets in, Amer in America that you want to go to your US kids. We'll let that will handle that business. And then you bought a condo in Bangkok and you have a Thai wife. Okay, we'll let the Thai will handle that. Now, I mean, obviously the wills need to jive, but, but the chances are your, your kids in America aren't going to get on a plane and come to Bangkok and fight your Thai wife over a fucking $50,000 condo. Well, maybe they will because American kids are greedy as fuck. But, again, I'm just giving you food for thought. You need a will in your home country. You need a will in the country that you're living in and the local language prepared by a local attorney. Because guess what? You die. You leave the condo to your Thai wife. Well, it's pretty simple if she has a Thai will. Okay? She has a Thai attorney. You're going to the Thailand land office. It's a Thailand court. There's no problems for the poor girl. You roll in there with nothing but a fucking U.S. will. Okay, you have a Thai attorney that may or may not speak English. The Thai judge may or may not speak English. You see the problems? So all these things are food for thought. I recommend two wills. A will in your home country to handle that business. To deal with those lawyers speaking that language and those judges speaking that language. Okay, so imagine if you're Russian, right? All right, well, you need a will in Russian that's going to take care of business in Russia, and you're living in Thailand, for example, you need a will in Thai to handle the Thai judicial system. You show up with a Russian will over in Thailand and try to present that to a Thai judge. Folks, I, I'm not an attorney, but I'm going to argue that it's better to have a will in from the country that you're living in in the language of the country that you're living in to deal with the assets in the country that you're living in now that's my opinion all right and i actually took some fucking notes here all right okay say all right i'm in the philippines i have a philippine a filipino attorney don't just keep this shit secret from, from your wife. Take her and introduce her to whoever this attorney is that has prepared the will and is going to help her, well, both of you, or you're dead, whatever, but is going to execute the will. Now, you know, certain, certain cultures, like here in the Philippines, folks, if you get a girl from the village like my wife, they're shy. They are so shy. If you say, hey, go down to the attorney's office, they are so damn shy, they don't want to go. So how do you mitigate that? Well, before you fucking die, you take your wife down to the attorney's office and you introduce her to the attorney. You let them chat for a little while. Now she knows the attorney. Now if you die, she knows to go to talk to Ate whoever or Kuya whoever. But if you just leave a business card in a file and say, this is my attorney, Folks, that's like, that's like, you know, telling her to go to the fucking moon. It's real easy to mitigate that. If, you know, if your wife is, uh, is, you know, from the village, she's from the province, she's shy, she's a younger lady, what have you. Take her and introduce her to the attorney. When you get the will done and say, look, when I die, this is who you're going to come talk to. Come, come talk to, you know, Kuya Raul or whoever. And now she knows who to talk to, she knows the man's name, she's met him before, now he's a friend. But if you, you try to hand that chick a business card or some attorney, some high-rise building down in Makati, it's gonna intimidate the fuck out of her. You're setting her up for failure. And that's gonna be another subject of this talk about setting your wife up for failure. Um, and we'll talk about that some more. But don't, don't set her up for failure. Set her up for success. Introduce her to the attorney. Walk her into his office. She knows exactly where to go, who to talk to. 
and that's going to be her her starting point if when when your ass fucking kicks the bucket and and fucking falls off the bar stool and, and and you knock yourself out now you have a fucking aneurysm and you're dead eight hours later all right let's see talking about the will folks make sure that people know exactly where your fucking will is located is it at the attorney's office do you have an extra copy in the safe is it with your best friend is it with your mom whoever don't do like most people when they die it's a fucking easter egg hunt to try to find the poor guy or the poor lady's will your family don't want to go on a goddamn Easter egg hunt trying to find the damn document that they're probably not going to understand in the first place. Make damn sure that your local wife or your family back in the States, again, if you're just traveling the world aimlessly, they know where the fuck this will is and they have access to it. If they don't know where it is, then it's a damn Easter egg hunt. They're probably never going to find the damn thing and then it's going to go by the, the law of the land. Okay, what if they know you have a will? They know where to find it, but they can't access it. Now, I'm just going to talk on the fringes of what just happened to my buddy Pablo. There was a couple issues. When Pablo was in Abu Dhabi, we knew exactly where his will was located. It was in the top of his closet in a goddamn blue shoebox. He reiterated this all the time. We always talk to each other about where our shit is at. He knew where my stuff is. I knew his shit was in a blue shoebox in the top right-hand corner of his closet at his house. Should anything happen to him, his, uh, his old lady would, well, he lived, you know, his old lady lived with him. So we knew to go to his house and we would get the shoebox and then, and then we would go from there. We knew exactly what to do. The problem arose during his death where he moved. His old lady did not move with him. He was in another country. When he died, he was living alone in an apartment. When people went into the apartment, we advised them, hey, can you find the blue shoebox that will have all the documents that you need in order uh, to fulfill this man's wishes. It's got his will. It's got directives. It's got letters to family members and friends They reported back to us that there was no blue shoebox So somewhere in between the move who the hell knows where the hell this blue shoebox ended up at? So then the question came all right Do I have the the legal right to go over there and search his apartment for this blue shoebox? And the answer is fucking no. I'm not a family member. I'm a friend. Even though those documents would have granted his brother and including myself and the J-Dog power of attorney, we didn't have the fucking power of attorney to show the apartment complex to where we could enter the apartment to search for these documents. We were unprepared. We were prepared and then during the move we became unprepared. Well guess what happened? The family took over. It all reverted back to the law of the land. The family took over and, and that's I'm going to leave it at that. Make sure people know where your will is and make sure that they can they, that it's accessible to them if you die. So if you are a lone bachelor living in a high-rise condo in Makati, Bangkok, wherever, and you die, and, but you've told your buddy down the hallway or you know, your buddy back in Kansas, hey man, if I die, my will's in my condo. Well, guess what? Here comes your buddy from Kansas. Hey, I need to get into my dead buddy's apartment. Well, who the fuck are you? Well, I'm his best buddy. Get the fuck out of here. We're not just going to let anybody in. They're not going to let you in. You don't have power of attorney. You don't have some documents. He hasn't set it up. So I'm telling you right now, by keeping your will in your own place, 
especially if you're a bachelor or if you're a fucking perpetual world traveler by yourself, you're, you're fucking the people who are supposed to come get it, who are supposed to find it. You need to leave that will somewhere with either the person that's going to execute it, your attorney, um, in a safety deposit box in your home country that you know your mother, father, you know, two or three family members can access. They have to be able to access that fucking will. It can be the most wonderful will in the world. Pablo had prepared his will in detail. But A, when he moved, we can't find it. B, I don't have the power of attorney and the right to go to his apartment now. Because his wife, his old lady's not there to let me in. I can't even go there and search for it, even if it's in there. So we fucked that up. Learn from our mistakes. Don't do what we, what we did. You need to keep that in mind. Have that will accessible to the person that's going to need to be using it. Moving right along. We pretty much beat that will issue like, like a fucking dead horse. But I guarantee you, I guarantee you, at least 75% of you don't have a fucking will. And even after watching me get in your face and say, get you a fucking will, you still won't do it. You will still fucking die. Your family will go on an Easter egg hunt trying to figure out if you had one, you didn't have one. And they'll be looking everywhere in every nook and fucking cranny because you don't fucking have one. If your wife is from the province, and folks, I don't like to use the word developing nations. I don't like to use the word third world countries. Fuck all that. I hate those fucking terms. So I, I'm just going to use something that, that is colloquial to me, and it doesn't matter if I am here in Southeast Asia or I'm in the back dirt roads of fucking Mississippi. If you get a girl from, a, from the back country roads that barely graduated high school, don't know the first shit about, about business, about banking, about anything like that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to refer to that demographic collectively. But I'm in the Philippines, okay, I have a, my, my old lady is from a small village. She, she's, until she met me, she never had a bank account, doesn't know the first thing about an ATM card, a credit card, writing a check, transferring money. Okay, if your wife is from an area like this, Central America, she does not know the first fucking thing about basic banking. They know nothing about banking. Nobody in their family has had a bank account. Maybe they had a, uh, you know, a cousin that had a foreign boyfriend that got some Western Union, and then she met you. You, you, you know, she knew how to go pick up money at Western Union and Palawan pawn shop. That is the ex extent of their banking knowledge. Unless you teach them how to use an ATM card. The extent of their knowledge is just standing by and watching you put this card in there. They have no idea how to, how to take money out. So most, most of these you know, girls in their, in their 20s from the back country roads, whether it's uh, from Zimbabwe, Thailand, the Philippines, Cambodia, or the back dirt roads of Mississippi, okay, these folks, these country girls have not been educated on banking. So here you are, you're handling the money, you're the foreign guy, you got your pension dumping into your, your account back home, you're transferring money into your local account, whatever you're doing, you're handling the money. Boom, you die. <sighs> Dead, in the fucking mission right there. How the fuck is your wife gonna access that money? How, how the hell is your wife, say you got 20, 30 grand in the bank, right? How the hell is your wife going to access that money if you have not taught her how to use your ATM card? Now, I'm not telling you to trust your wife or your girlfriend with your ATM card and your PIN number. 
because they, you know you may get drunk and then they run off and with their local boyfriend and start cleaning out your account got it tracking on that but you should teach her how to use it so that if you die and she goes to that blue shoe box full of documents opens it up and you say look baby you know the ATM card pin number is this I want you to just start getting money out so you've got enough money to operate on you know eventually it'll they'll they'll give you the balance over to your account whatever the hell uh, is gonna come come out but if your wife doesn't know how to go to the ATM card ATM machine with your ATM card from the states and pull out fucking 200 bucks you're fucking wrong and I'm gonna give you a case study to illustrate how fucking wrong you are when one of my buddies died here they 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 had no money um, because he well he he would actually what he would do he would send his right-hand man who worked for him he had trained this local guy from the village how to get money out of his fucking US account with the you know at the ATM card and the fool never never trained his wife he never showed his wife how to get money out of the account and I'm like dude why don't you fucking show your wife how to get money out of your account what if you die oh no 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 don't worry about it you know he takes care of it he he drives over to the town every week and he gets the money out he brings it back I trust him I was like all right well what if something happens to that motherfucker what if he gets hit by a jeepney on the way back from that fucking ATM machine you know after you die now nobody knows how to do it your wife you need to teach your wife how to use the ATM machine how to get money out of your US account well folks he never taught her she had no idea how to get money out of the account and there were some other there were some other issues uh, surrounding uh, when he died but basically they waited so long for money to get sent and for her to be able to access the money that that man laid basically here in 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 the southeast asia the philippine fucking heat for over 10 days now folks everything here when you leave the west it's cash and carry whether it's medical care funeral expenses no funeral home is going to fucking bury your ass until you pay okay they don't take care of business and then worry about how you're going to pay that's not the way things work here so while they're waiting on this money to come in and figure out how she can access it this man laid in this fucking heat for over 10 days you say all right well big deal well what happens here is they bring the body most time they bring the body to the home you lay in state in the home until it's time to go you know uh, you know get uh, get buried get put in a concrete block or put in the ground or what what have you now in Thailand they got these refrigerated caskets I've never been to a to a funeral or a death where they weren't in the refrigerated casket. They could lay there as long as they want to. They're refrigerated. In the Philippines, I ain't never seen one of those. I'm not saying there are, but way out in the province, they're not fucking renting no damn refrigerated viewing casket. They're in a goddamn box in the fucking heat. The shocking thing is they waited so long for that money okay my girlfriend was at was at the funeral and she said there was maggots crawling in and out of his fucking eyeballs because he had fucking been rotting for so long waiting on this money to come so they could pay the funeral home and bury the man if you don't teach your local wife how to use the fucking ATM machine you can say oh well, I leave her a stash of money good on you that's what you need to do you need to have some some fucking emergency money stashed away with this will and everything but say you didn't you know say say you ended up using it whatever you forgot to replenish it if your wife doesn't know how to use your ATM card you may be fucking laying around with maggots crawling out of your goddamn eyes until somebody figures out how to access that that bank account it's unnecessary but so many people here 
if you're watching this and you have you know you're you're in one of these regions take a look over at your wife or your girlfriend and 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 just take a look at her and answer the question in your mind does this bitch know how to get money if i died right now and if the answer is no all right well you got maggots crawling out of your fucking eyeballs by the time they get that money to put you in a concrete block you're wrong fucking address it not next week, not next month. Fucking ride the goat. Ride the fucking goat and address the fucking problem. Okay. Folks who who own and run businesses. And again, this isn't just picking on Southeast Asia. It's not picking on Central America. It's, it's picking on guys who run businesses where their wives are not business people. You know, maybe the wife is a housewife. She's from the back road. She's from the country. And I'm going to specifically apply it uh, to here, to the Philippines. You get a girl from the village. She don't know about banking. She don't know about spreadsheets. She don't know shit about running a business. Unless... You make her actively participate in that business. And to qualify my argument, well my, here's my point. My point is that if you are outside your home country and you have a local wife and you're running a business, if you are not making your wife be an active part of running that business day to day, you're wrong. You're fucking wrong. You're going to set your, your wife up for failure when you fucking die. You need to have your wife actively involved in the business, actively making decisions, good, bad, or the ugly, falling on her face, making bad decisions. She needs to be a part of that business every damn day. <clears throat> and it's based off of a principle, and maybe I've talked about this before, but my friend and I, Doc Wayne, we call it the tilapia pond effect. And basically, several years ago, we were going to look at some property. And, a, bu and uh, a buddy of ours, actually the gentleman that I was just talking about, that his wife didn't know how to access the money. He told us about this, uh, this local lady who used to be married to an American guy. And he said she has a, a few plots of land for sale. He said, go, go talk to her. You know, she was married to an American guy. An American dude died of old age. And, you know, she just wants to uh, liquidate these properties. She needs some money, so you probably get a good deal. We said, all right, we'll go, we'll go meet the lady. And he said, look, they, they used to own a resort on the other side of the island. And, you know, I'll just tell the tricycle driver where to take you. Everybody, you know, they ran the resort for years. Everybody knows where it's at. Okay, cool. So me and Doc Wayne load up in a tricycle. We ride over to, uh, to her place. And it's a beautiful property. Right on the beach, there's sort of like a little cliff. So it's kind of a, you know, set up a little bit. You can have a view. Then you go down, there's a little sliver of private beach there. It's a beautiful property. So we, we walk there and, and, you know, we're kind of looking around. And... You know, they had some like individual type little, little, uh, what do you call them? Little huts, gazebo, not gazebos, but little, little cabin type deals, little, little, uh, you know, just beach view, little hooches. It's a beautiful property. <clears throat> so she takes us and she's showing us around. She shows us her husband's wood shop. And when you walk in this wood shop, it's obviously, it's a, it's an American guy. You know, he's got some. Got some saws and all this woodworking that he had done. Obviously, that was his hobby and his passion. And then we walk over to the swimming pool area. We look down at the swimming pool, and it looked like looked like a goddamn catfish pond. And so we're like looking at each other, and we're like, uh, "What's you know?" I mean, at this point, we had no idea what we were looking at. We're like, "Hey, what what's wrong with the pool? Did the pump break or the filter break?" And she's like, oh no. She said, when my, when my husband died, 
We just turn it into a tilapia pond. We just put tilapia pond, uh, we just put tilapia in there. We raise tilapia, oh, it's great. Every night we just throw a line in there, we catch two or three tilapia and we grill them up. So me and Doc Wayne are like looking at each other. This nice fucking beautiful swimming pool is now a tilapia pond. And so she walks off, you know, doesn't think nothing about it. And she's talking to one of her family members or something. So, you know, Doc Wayne turns to me and he goes, well, I guess we know now what happens to a, to a resort when the foreign guy dies. I'm like, yeah, it's fucking tilapia pond effect. So we have termed this, this phenomenon, this condition, this outcome, we call it the tilapia pond effect. Folks, basically, if, if you're a foreign guy and you're running a resort with your local wife, the minute you die, there's about a 99% chance that all her family is moving in before the funeral. That swimming pool will probably be swam in for three days until it turns into a mud hole from 50 people swimming in there, and then they're gonna put tilapia in there. That's the reality. You run a resort, you're turning over business, you've got clients, the minute you die, 99% chance your Filipinas family is moving in, 50, 100 of them. And they'll be raising tilapia in that swimming pool. That's the end of the business. That's the end of the money turning over because that's just what happens. I've seen it. I'm not saying all cases that's what's gonna happen, but it happens for several reasons. Number one, it's a cultural thing. Hey, you know, Filipinas want to take care of their family members. They're going to let everybody move in. Now there's no room for guests. They don't want to spend extra money on the chlorine for the pool. It's easier to put tilapia in there, right? And so they, the, the business is going to die. The family's moving in. The business is, is over with especially if you did not include her in the running of the business or if the business is too big for her to handle if it's, if it's outside of her scope to be able to handle this business the tilapia pond effect is going to happen to a lot of foreign run businesses if the foreign guy dies and they have and you have not they have not properly educated their local wife on how to run the business the importance of running the business and allow their wife to see the turnover of money if they have been running it for years then you're probably in that one percent chance that the business will continue if they have not been running that business for years or if they've never run the business at all guess what there's gonna be 20 kuyas doing cannonballs into the fucking swimming pool once it gets dirty and they they don't want to buy the chlorine in go the tilapia 50 people living at your resort the electricity probably gets fucking cut off because they can't pay the fucking electric bill again does this happen in all cases no it doesn't I'm trying to invoke thought for you as the foreign guy sitting there running this resort thinking about expanding it and you're 65 years old. If you have a resort with 12 rooms, your wife can probably handle that if you're teaching her how to do it. But if she's struggling to manage 12 rooms and you want to expand this damn thing to 50 and you're 65 you know 50 rooms and you're 65 years old i'm going to argue that you're setting her up for failure it will be too much for her to, to manage and handle and then you will just throw her hands in the air boom tilapia pond tilapia pond effect in that big ass pool that you just put in that's what's going to happen so don't don't set your wife up for failure. You have to set her up for success by forcing her to be a part of this business until the day you die. 
And I would say, you know, if, you, if you're, you're, you're 65, you need, to, you need to back off from the business. If you're 65, you disengage and you sit on the bar stool and observe and maybe just give her slight course corrections at night when you're outside the room and the view of the staff. That's what I would say. Now, folks, I may have to reset this. Uh, all right, I'm just going to keep going on. I think I'm out of memory. So set your, set your wife up for success by scaling the business to a level that she can handle, that she and her family can handle. And maybe if you're running a business this big and you get 65, maybe you scale it here so it's something she can handle. If it's way too big, it's going to fail. Tilapia pond effect is going to take, take over. And then there's no money. Scale it down, let her manage it, force her to manage it, and then maybe she'll stay in business. Okay. Scaling down, let, let me go even further about scaling down. You need to scale down everything. Once you hit 65, 70, scale down everything. If you have stocks, bonds, mutual funds, all of these types of investments back in your home country, liquidate that shit. Liquidate it, reinvest it in the country that you're in with your wife and kids, whatever you're going to do. But if, if you kick the fucking can and you've got these stocks, bonds, mutual funds, whatever, how the hell does your Thai or Filipino wife know how to liquidate that shit know how to access that stuff, they have no idea. Hell, if you told me to go liquidate some mutual funds and deal with it and give it, I have fucking no idea how to do it. It's much easier if you scale things down and liquidate things while you're still alive. And you don't leave any of this complication to your wife, especially it, you know, a girl from the back country roads, no matter what country you're in. Get it done while you're alive, liquidate it, reallocate it to where when you kick out, she doesn't have to do anything. Especially if you have, say if you have a vehicle here, you have a vehicle in your name, why would you want to die and let your poor wife try to go down there and change it over to your name? That's fucking stupid. If you're 65 years old, put the damn vehicle in your kid's name. Put the vehicle in your kid's name. That it needs to go to them anyhow when you die. Put it in their name. You drive it when you're dead. Okay, boom. You know, your son just comes and gets the car. There's no issues. Get ahead of the fucking death curve. It's the same way if you own property. Now, I know foreigners can't own property, but if you own a condo or a business or anything else, the closer you get to that 65 mark, and I'm, I'm on the left side of that. I, I want to do shit sooner. So, for example, I own a condo. By the time I'm 50 years old, I'm going to put that condo in my kid's name. Now, if I'm still living in the condo and you say, well, maybe, maybe me and the mother get sideways, she tried to, okay, put it in your kid's name, lease it from your child for 30 years. Now the kid can't kick you out, and if you die, it's already in the kid's name. There's no transfer paperwork. All, about, all this shit is about getting ahead of the curve. And it's not country specific, but especially if you're living here, you're living in Central America, it's easier for you to do it. You understand business, okay? Put it in your kid's name, lease it from them, they can't boot you out. It's pretty solid. You could do the same with your old lady, but would I rather put the, the property in my wife's name and lease it from her, or put it in my kid's name and lease it from my kid? I prefer the kid route. The old lady can come and go. I don't give a shit what she does, but it's going to the kids anyhow. All right, let's talk about embassy paperwork. Regardless of what country you're from, there, there may be uh, some benefits 
especially if you have younger children. So I'm, I'm from the U.S., right? So you have younger children, you die, uh, they're entitled to your Social Security benefits until they're 18, right? Make sure that you have all your documents together to deal with your home embassy. Check, check. Okay, folks, I'm back. I'm back. I had to. I'm back. I had to clear the damn memory card. I forgot to clear it from the last video. So when I stacked this video, the damn thing ran out. So where was I? I was talking about embassy paperwork. Now, depending on what country you're from, you know your 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 wife, your kids here may be entitled to some ben some benefits. You know, I'm from the U.S., got young kids here, so uh, once I kick the can, they should be able to draw off uh, my Social Security until they're, what, 18? It's not a huge chunk of money by Western standards, but over here, all right, well, it means they can eat. So, depending on, you know, what the benefits are from, from your home country, you gotta make sure that you've got all the necessary paperwork together. So when your ass is, is dead as a fucking hammer, your local wife can go in there, make an appointment, and have all of these documents together. And it's gonna be shit that you don't think of, like certified copies of, of this document. Certified copies of this document. Shit, you're probably not going to think about, so it's probably worth browsing your embassy's uh, website and just looking at, you know, report of death of, you know, U.S. citizen and just see what they're looking for. You know, just, just browse the website as if you're dead and your wife is going to have to go in there and navigate this system to try to apply for benefits or to report you, your ass as being dead and just get ahead of the game and let her know what she's up against up against but simple shit like certified copies of documents yeah you and I know how to do that right we can get on the phone we can send an email we can pay online we can get the certified documents that we need sent to us but do you think that my Filipina knows how to go to some courthouse in the state of Georgia in the U.S. and get certified documents sent to her, folks. She don't have the. She don't have the. She doesn't even know what the hell a certified document is, much less know how to go and pay online and get the shit, you know, shipped over here. It's easy for you. It's difficult for them. If you don't have these documents together simple documents like your damn birth certificate your you know DD-214 if you were in the military all of these simple documents uh, divorce decrees which may need to be certified all of this stuff it's easy for you to get this shit together is it a pain in the ass well of course it is doing anything with the United States government any government agency is a pain in the ass Nobody looks forward to that, but you can navigate it. It's a pain in the ass for you, but it becomes damn near impossible if you leave this for your wife to handle. So make sure you put all these documents that you could even fathom that she may need when you decide to take a fucking dirt nap, have all these documents in a folder together for her. She's not going to even know what the hell they are, but when she walks into that embassy, lays that folder down, let the damn uh, embassy official, she, you know, he or she shall go through that and pick out what she needs. Too easy. So if you're a veteran, have that, have that set of documentation ready. Your pension, have all those documents together. 
And what you also need to do is write down a road map. Now, I'm being Captain Obvious by a lot of the things I'm saying. But you would be surprised that the, the majority of people I know that have went down, they didn't have none of this shit together. And I'm, and I'm still going to say most of you don't have this shit together. I'm in the same boat. I don't have all of my shit together. But I'm cognizant of it and I'm working on it. Write down a, a detailed roadmap for what your wife needs to do. Okay, it's easy to say go to the embassy. All right, she knows, all right, I go to the embassy, now what? Write down a set of instructions. You make an appointment on this website. This is the link. You go, you talk to the official, and you, you, know, you report that I'm dead. You apply for these benefits. You let them know, yes, I was in the military. Yes, I'm retired from this company. Yes, I have this pension. You gotta write all this stuff down because for you and I, it's common knowledge because we're from there. It's not common knowledge, you know, to your local Guatemalan wife who has no idea that you have burial benefits from the VA. She has no idea that you're gonna, you're gonna have those types of benefits unless you tell her and you write it down. If you don't write it down, she's gonna forget anyhow. Put her together a packet of all the documents she may need with the road map. And I would even go this far, and I've done this with my old lady. Take her to your embassy. You know, if you blow through Manila, take her over there to Ermita, to the embassy. If you're from the U.S. and say, this is the embassy. Okay, you're going to write down the link where she can make an appointment and say, once you make this appointment, you print out this slip, you come stand in line right there next to this Kuya. Now, why do you need to do that? Because then it's familiar. Then she knows exactly where to go. Okay, show her a hotel to stay at. You stay at this hotel, you're gonna walk across the street, you're gonna stand in that line. Now she knows exactly where to go. You've set her up for success. Instead of, you know, your wife being from Mindanao, say, oh, go to the US Embassy. No fucking clue what to do. But if you've already taken her there, she's already seen the line, she already knows where to go and who to talk to, boom, now it's, now it's not so scary to go up to the embassy. Let's talk about the funeral itself, the logistics of when your ass dies and now she's dealing with a fucking corpse of a white guy. And when I say white guy, I'm saying a, a foreign guy or a black guy. Whatever. <laughs> She's dealing with a gringo laid out on a slab. Now what do you do with the, with the body? No matter what country you're in, there are going to be different cultural norms, religious practices. In the Philippines, not too different from, you know, um, you know, funerals and burials in the West. I mean, we're all, it's all Christian. But say you go over to Thailand, Cambo, Lao, Vietnam. Now you're dealing with a whole different set of rules and cultural norms. You have to lay down exactly what you want to do. And you lay it down with your wife. And then once you lay these plans down, you have to brief your family back in your home country and say, hey, this is what I'm going to do. Okay, so imagine, now my, my family knows, I've been over here for a long time. They, they pretty much know me, I've discussed it with them, but if I'm in Thailand, I'm going to be buried in Thai tradition. Okay, a Buddhist funeral, and I'm going to get cremated, get burned up after three days. That's what I want to do. If I'm in the Philippines, it's whatever local tradition, the cheapest route that my wife can, can lay down for me. So the country you're in, those cultural aspects may shock your family back in the West. If you've got, you know, uh, you know a family that's Southern Baptist, which you know most of my family is, 
And if they, if they didn't know me, and I told, you know, and, and my, my wife calls them up and says, yeah, we're going to take Marcos to the temple and burn them up tomorrow, they would be fucking shocked. But I've already talked to them about it. They've already been briefed on this subject. But the burial plans, you need to get ahead of that curve too. It's easy to talk to your local wife here and say, look, you know, where, where's, your, where's all your family buried? Oh, down here at the cemetery. All right, let's go down there and talk to him about how much it's going to cost. You go down there, I'll let her go first and lock in the price. <laughs> but go down there, get the price locked in, how much you're going to have to pay them, the funeral home, all of this, and set that money aside. Put it in a fucking envelope in the packet of documents. However you want to set it aside. And write this in your wills. And then call your family and say, hey, look, this is my wish. I don't want to be flown back to the U.S. I don't want to spend all this money on a plane ticket to go back to fucking Kansas and get put in the cemetery next to Uncle Joe Bob. I don't give a fuck. I want to be buried here. It's cheaper. You know, it's my wife. My kids are here now. This is what I want to do. What happens is if you don't coordinate that with your family back in the States, they are going to do everything in their power to do what what they would they would think. We got to get the body back here. We got to we got to get you know. We got to get uh, Billy back home to Kansas where we can go bury him in the cemetery over there. That's all they're thinking. So you got to coordinate this with both sets of families. If you want to be buried here, then you set the you get the arrangements in place, and then you brief your family back home. And tell them guys, hey, look, if you want to come to the funeral, you can come, but don't interfere with these fucking plans. This is what I want. So don't let my wife's going to handle it. Whoever's going to handle it. This is what I'm doing. You know, I'm in Thailand. I want to be burned up at the temple, cremated. Don't come over here and try to interfere with any plans. If you don't brief them on it, they're either going to be shocked they're going to try to interfere with the plans. They're going to be some rift between your family and the wife. There's no need for that. You can resolve all these issues and coordinate all these issues while your fucking heart's still beating. So, so get, get some type of plan together about what to do with the gringo's body when you kick out, where you want to go, what you want to do. And also have the money set up. I've already talked about most things outside the West are cash and carry. If, if your wife don't have money to pay the funeral home or the dudes building the concrete box to put you in, they're not, they're not going to work until you pay them. Have that plan, that monetary plan together or your ass would be sitting at the house for 10 days till maggots are crawling out of your fucking eyeballs. Okay, a living will. I have a living will that that I carry with me and I realize that it's, it may or may not hold any weight being outside the US. Now in the Philippines it may, but in Thailand, countries where English is not the, uh, the first language, you may have problems. And it re will revert back to if, if I'm in Thailand and I have a Thai document, you know, prepared by a Thai attorney okay that's gonna work but if I if I you know somebody slides the doctor this US document this may or may not work and I do need to get my shit together and it's a living will and with my living will um, basically folks it you know you, the living will is where you can lay down directives if you're incapacitated so say I walk out here and I get fucking hit by a jeepney and and half my fucking head is gone, but you know I'm still breathing. This heart's still beating. That's when the living will kicks in. It issues some directives, and and I'll just tell you my directives. I do not want any type of advanced life support systems deployed on my ass. If I can't breathe on my own, cut the shit off. That's it. In the fucking mission, okay. I, I'm ready to go. I don't want to leave my old lady with a big ass hospital bill. You know, if they're fucking, you know, uh, racking it up while I'm sitting there. 
I don't want that. You know, if there is a, a diminished EEG, electroencephalogram, in other words, my brain waves are fucked up, they're diminished or there are none, but fucking pull the plug. I don't want to be on the shit in the first place, but if they do, once they verify, my directives are to cut the fucking plug. I don't want any type of advanced, uh, layman's term, artificial life support going on on my ass. I've had a good run. If I'm in that state, just let me die. Uh, I've already discussed it with people, whether they agree with me or not. There's witnesses to it. I have it in a, a notarized, witnessed document stating uh, these directives. I do not want to be shipped back to the United States. Just bury me in whatever country I'm in. If I happen to be in Vietnam, then I'll be buried in Vietnam. If I happen to be in Abu Dhabi, then you bury me in the Muslim tradition and, and, and just, that's it. I don't, uh, I'm not spending any of my money on a fucking plane ticket for, for this dead body. That's the way I feel. So I have all these directives there, along with the fact that um, I, I'm, I want to be an organ donor. So if there's any part of my body that can benefit other people, including my entire body to donate to the local medical school if they're accepting cadavers uh, to study. All of that's in my, my written will. And I'm, what I'm thinking about doing is in addition to carrying this document, I'm gonna make a YouTube video. So wherever country I'm in, the doctor can hit play, see my face, they can read the document and say, hey, this is what this guy wants cut the plug, call in anybody that's gonna harvest my organs, medical school wants the body, by all means, that's what I want. Those are my directives. Will they be followed uh, based on that document written in English and backed up by a, a YouTube video once I get around to doing it? I don't know, we'll see. But I figure it's better than nothing. And I, I think what'll happen is once with, with the document and then once somebody shows up, they'll be able to make the decision and, and that's it. You know, that's, that's just the way I want to go out. So I would, if, if you're an expat or perpetual world traveler, I would definitely have some type of living will, carry that with you so the doctors know what your directives are. And I'm not saying to, to go that route, I'm just saying they, so they know what your directives are as far as uh, you know, what you want done health-wise. You can put specifics in there, and whether they follow it or not, who knows. But it's, it's a damn document. What does it take you? A couple hours to crank out this document, get it notarized, have some people sign it, and, and carry it with you. And discuss these wishes and directives with others so they know that you know, that's what you want to do. So yeah, so in a nutshell, my living will, um, no life support, bury me in the country that I'm at, harvest any organs, donate the body to the medical school, whatever you want to do. I don't give a shit. I had a good run and no regrets. Now, I, I'm trying to, I, I'm gonna be a smart ass here for a minute, but this goes back to if you don't have your shit together, your family may be trying to pull the Trump card back in the States and get your body shipped back. So you know your mother, no, we gotta have a funeral here at the church. You know, she contacts the embassy. Next thing you know, you know your, your local wife doesn't have a proper will, so uh, embassy official or, or your family shows up with the documents. Next thing you know, your fucking body is on a plane back to the States against your wishes. And I don't want that to happen to myself and especially don't want it to happen if I have some type of critical injury. The last thing I want somebody to do if I'm critically injured is to call the fucking U.S. Embassy. I don't need your fucking help. Okay? I've got the directives. This is what I want to do. Cut the fucking machines off. Let my ass die peacefully. 
I don't want nobody calling the embassy and the next thing you know, somebody's trying to arrange a $100,000 fucking emergency transport. Fuck that. If I fucking lived and had a $100,000 goddamn fucking bill for a damn medevac jet, private jet service, I'd just fucking kill myself. <laughs> I'd kill myself anyhow. Fuck that. Now, you can interpret that how you want, but you see my point. Just honor my directives. Don't call the motherfucking embassy. Don't, don't try to put me on a fucking plane smoking out of here to get better care somewhere else. I figure I got that licked anyhow, because when, when they try to wheel me on that fucking plane, I'll just use every ounce of energy to fucking scream out some security threats, right? You know, when they're trying to wheel me on the plane, I'd be like, hey, I got a I got I got fucking two pair of toenail clippers shoved up my ass and some extra lithium batteries that are over 10,000 milliamps. And uh, I have no idea who packed my luggage. It's been with strangers for the past three days and then just go back to sleep. <laughs> I don't think they're going to let me on that flight anyhow. So yeah, I just being smart ass, but you get my point. Getting your shit together document-wise, money-wise. We talked about teaching her ass how to use the ATM machine. But I would stash a thousand dollars. Here, say 50,000 pesos. I would stash it somewhere. And I know that's hard to stash money because if your wife finds it, she's gonna spend it. Um, but if you've got a thousand dollars cash where she can immediately access that if your ass kicks the bucket. That just gives her enough money to, to, to at least get a start on what she's got to do. And like I said, I know that's dangerous. If I left a thousand bucks in here, my old lady found it. I mean, she'd be tempted not to be going up to the damn market and shopping. But that's my recommendation. Have, have them with at least a thousand dollars cash on hand or somebody available to immediately deliver that cash. Oh yeah, I got a little coffee with a shot of Jim Bean. Pretty good. All right, death, cer death certificates. Well, this is something that your old lady's gonna need if she goes down to your embassy and applies for benefits or what have you. Folks, a lot of countries around the globe, you can buy fucking death certificates, you know, 20 bucks. And the embassies are wise to this. I'm not sure exactly what the system here is in the Philippines. Um, I've never actually had to go in and report the death of anybody. I, I don't know what the system is. But I would say that if you die on the back roads of some dirt roads in Cambodia, they take you to the temple and burn you up. And there's some fucking handwritten death certificate in Cambodian. Uh, the embassy may question that. And I don't want to speak for them. I don't know. But I would make it quite clear to your old lady that she needs to somehow properly document the fact that your ass is dead. You know, she, you need to coach her that she needs a proper death certificate. And I don't know how to say this. Maybe it's, you know, preferably you need to die at a fucking reputable hospital, I guess. I don't know. Just try to die at a bigger hospital and that way maybe they lend a little bit more credence, you know, with your death certificate than if you died on a dirt road somewhere back out in the boondocks. You get my point. Uh, so I, I don't know. I know people that are watching this can weigh in in the comments about the death certificates and how to report uh, when a person dies. I don't fucking know about that. But I just know that, you know, if I was kicking it over with my buddies in Afghanistan right now and I fucking died up in the mountains, where the hell are they going to get a death certificate? Uh, you know what I mean? I mean, they, they could get one. But I think they'd probably be better off just taking my damn body straight to the embassy and just putting it on the sidewalk and then let them figure it out through fingerprints and DNA. You get my point, right? Let your wife know she needs, 
She, wherever you are and you die, she needs a damn death certificate. All right, folks. That's pretty much today's discussion. I did a little bit of drinking, so some of this is rambling. A lot of this is rambling. A lot of this is common sense, Captain Obvious. But I've had buddies die over here. You know, recently my buddy Pablo died. We thought we had our shit together. We don't. Um, it just never went smooth. And I got to think about it and I said, you know what? It's never fucking went smooth when somebody died in the States. It was always the fucking Easter egg hunt. You know, hunting for fucking Easter eggs, hunting for a will, hunting for a birth certificate. It doesn't have to be like that. It's easier for you the individual to get all this shit together because you're not going to, it, it, it's already difficult in the States. Imagine how difficult it is for your Filipina or your Guatemalan or your Thai wife. If she goes to the embassy and the embassy says, oh, well, we're missing a certified copy of this. She has no fucking clue what they're talking about. No, uh, no idea how to go about getting it. That's why you got to get off your ass and put this plan together. I've seen a lot of, you know, I've had buddies die over here, and then I'll say I've had a lot of drinking buddies. Now, were they necessarily good friends? No, but I drank with them every day. I've seen them drop like flies, and I don't, I don't know their exact situations. But I can tell you this, I don't, I don't know the first person that had his shit wired tight to where, where if he drops dead or when he dropped dead, he had everything together so well that there was no stress on, on his local wife to try to figure this shit out. That's just, that's my experience. I figured it was worth a video, worth a discussion, just try to invoke thought. You guys out there that have not punched out in your home country, that are making plans to retire, uh, you're making plans to travel the world, just think about what I've said and get your shit together, you know, document wise, talking to your family, briefing them on what your plan is and what you're going to do, and get everything together before you leave over there. It's just one less stress on you. Stress, less stress on them and again you marry a local girl that's really your concern um, you know your concern should be not leaving them holding a fucking bag of dog shit with no way to figure it out all right my friends it's a, uh, it's a nice cool morning here in the Philippines. It's been fucking raining for like two, three days. I guess a little typhoon blew through or, or something. I don't know. It's been raining. So I'm hoping today that the rain lets out where I can get out of the house a little bit, take everybody out, go for a nice long walk. If you're not a subscriber, uh, bottom, bottom right hand corner of your screen. There's a uh, overstay road sign. If you click on that, and it should say subscribe or something, then click on subscribe and become a subscriber on my channel. Food, beer, visas, a lot of drinking, bad behavior, really just whatever I, I publish out there. There's no niche here on my channel. And it's just, like I said, whatever pops in my damn head for the day or whatever I'm doing for the day. You know, nothing scripted. But I would uh, love to have you as a subscriber. Let me say one more thing. If, if you get into a conversation with a dude on a bar stool, a lot of guys will say, oh, I got, I got $200,000 life insurance. My wife would be fine. I got $300,000 life insurance. She's well taken care of. Well, you know, being the jackass and the devil's advocate, I'm always like, oh, yeah, well, what's your plan? Hey, what do you mean, what's my plan? I'm going to die, she's going to get $300,000. <laughs> and I'm like, man, you ain't got, that's, <laughs> that's not a plan. There is no plan there. 
And I'm not casting stones at anybody. I grew up poor. I'm a redneck. I grew up on a dirt road in a fucking trailer. If you give any of my redneck relatives 200 grand, they're going to be broke in six months. That's poor people the world around. So when guys here in this country say, oh, yeah, I got a $100,000 life insurance. She's going to be taken care of for the rest of her life. No, she's not. She's going to get that money, and she and every family member that she's got is going to come out of the goddamn woodwork. Within about 10 minutes, they're going to have the biggest fucking vidjoki machine delivered to their place with the biggest fucking bank of speakers that you've ever seen. That's probably like two, three thousand dollars and the music's going to start bumping. That's going to be purchase number one. The biggest vidjoki machine and speakers. That's going to chip away. Now she's got 98,000 left. If you think that giving her that money in a lump sum is going to take care of her uh, for more than six months or a year, you're wrong, my friend. That money's going to be gone. Every family member she's got is coming out of the woodwork once they, once they find out she got that check. So she's going to dish out a lot of money to the family. Pretty much every family member is going to have a fucking big-ass big jokey machine here in this culture. That's just the way it is. If you don't have some type of plan for that money, it's gone in six months or a year. You have to take the extra steps and micromanage how that money is going to be dispersed, where that money is going to be spent, what it's going to be spent on. You've got to spend the money to get this attorney lined up, an accountant, a trust fund, something. Because if you're, you know, and again, I'm not casting stones at any country. I'll just say if you, you give, if you had given me, you know, 20 year old redneck from the backwoods of Mississippi, 25 years old. You give me 200 grand, it's, I have no idea what to do with it. You have to micromanage that life insurance policy somehow. And I don't have the exact answer. But I do know that if I went in there and gave my old lady 100 grand and said, hey, you know, that's to take care of you for the next 10 years, nope. That money be gone in six months. It goes back to setting, setting your old lady up for success and not failure. You got to structure that money. You got to, you know, monthly payouts, some type of trust, some type of, you know, chop it up. Once the kid graduates, each kid gets this for college. Well, you got to do something. But when I talk to a lot of dudes on bar stools, oh yeah, I got a hundred thousand. My wife will get it. We'll be fine. They'll, my kids will be taken care of. Nope. Sorry, they're just not. Okay, poor people don't know how to manage money. That's the way it is. That money gonna be gone. It's gonna be spent on uh, big jokey machines. Probably a brand new car that nobody fucking knows how to drive. It'll just sit in the driveway as a status symbol. So now they're down to what, 60,000? You see how, it's just the way it's gonna be. All right, well, I thought I'd bring that up. And hey, folks, again, this, this little talk here has nothing to do with where I'm at. This is, this is worldwide. This is, this is a worldwide talk. You know, typically if you're an expat, your wife is a little bit younger than you. That's just the way it is. And most of the time, they're not rocking no fucking MBA from Harvard. Now, if you're, you know, if your wife is a business lady, well, obviously, dude, this don't apply to you. But for a lot of us, a lot of us, this is very applicable. This is very applicable. You know, my wife, number one, she's a great lady. You know, takes care of the kids, sweet girl have a great time but does she know anything about a spreadsheet nope she know anything about interest nope you got to teach them about stuff like that and that's what I'm working on I recommend you work on it too have a plan especially if your ass is 65 years old you think you're gonna live to be a hunter hope you do my friend 
but just have everything in order so you don't set your, uh, your local wife up for failure, set her up for success. All right. All right, I'll shut the fuck up up now. Thanks for joining me.